Hey, Elevens, here we go. Next part, multiple choice questions with a Kaz. All right, hopefully I should be able to whip through this within half an hour. Uh, usually you should aim for half an hour if you're an actual exam. But anyways, here we go. So amplitude and period of the function. Amplitude is clearly three. Uh, period, we know that period is dictated by two pi on n. And the number in front of x right now, now if you expand the brackets here, it's 4 times x and 4 times negative pi. So it's 4x minus 4 pi. And so therefore n has to be 4. So 2 pi on 4 gives you pi on 2. So the period's pi on 2 and the amplitude's 3. Now obviously these don't have an amplitude of 3. The only one that fits the criteria is b. Okay, pretty nice and easy. Next question. Uh, what are we doing? We've got next question, height, tidal river at time t, okay, where t equals zero corresponds to midday on Monday at 7 a.m. Okay, so these kind of questions, hopefully you've done some application questions or at least 2017 paper, the extended response question is very similar to this, but this one's obviously easier. So you got this graph, okay, where t equals zero corresponds to midday. Midday is like 12 p.m. So... If midday is 12 p.m. on Monday, then how many hours from 12 p.m. to get to 7 a.m. on Tuesday? Okay, that's that's essentially what the question is. So how many hours from 12 p.m. to 7 a.m.? Well, 12 p.m. to 12 midnight would be 12 hours, plus an extra 7 hours to get to 7 a.m., so 12 plus 7 is 19 hours. So you already know when t equals 19, that will be 7 a.m. on Tuesday, and they're asking for the height of the river. And they told you that you can find the height if you give them a time. So on your calculator, just put in the time or solve that value there. So here we go. I'm going to go to my CAS. Uh, the question was, I'm just going to, actually, I can't be bothered defining it. I'm just going to go 0 0.5 times cos, or you can do trig here, cos of pi on 6. Sorry, control fraction pi on 6 multiplied to, now we just worked out t is 19 hours after midday to get to Tuesday 7 a.m. Uh, and then there's a plus 4 over there, so times 19 plus 4. And is, did it say closest to? Yeah, closest to. Now I'm looking for 3.56 or 57. And wait, not 56, yeah, point. 3.6 technically if you round it off, yeah? Round it off to the first decimal place, so it'll be C. There you go, quick and easy. Don't get afraid with those questions. It's just define your calculator and answer the question, yeah? Next part, part of the graph of the function f is shown below. This is clearly a tangent graph. They're all tans. Um, look, I usually look at the period first and think about it from negative pi to this point is distance pi and from here to here, it's also another pi, so really, the total period is 2 pi. Pi plus pi is 2 pi. So if you know that the period for tan, the formula is pi on n, well, you just figured out the period is 2 pi, and now you can figure out pi on n. I can find n. So multiply, or you can do it on your calculator. Do solve. See, even if you're not good at your solving, you just type in 2 pi equals 2 pi on n, so you got pi on n, and then comma n, solve for n, n is half. Okay, so you now know that n is half, and remember y equals tan of n x, n is half, so you're looking for x on 2, and actually all of them, the, the only one that has x on 2 is b, okay, because n is the number in front of x, and we just figured out n equals half from the calculator, okay. So it had to be B. Next one. If cos of theta equals... Okay, so I did this similar question in um, the 2017 paper. So hopefully you can have a go at this one and should be able to do as well. But anyways, cos of an angle is equal to negative root 3 on 2. So from pi to 3 pi on 2, we're in the third quadrant. And cos of an angle uh, will give you this value. Okay? Uh, negative root 3 on 2. Cos is the, obviously, x-axis. But remember, 
because of theta is also adjacent over hypotenuse. So if you said that it's equal to negative root 3 on 2, well technically, or you can ignore the negative by the way because we're looking at values, then technically the adjacent is equivalent to root 3 and the hypotenuse is 2. So if I drew out my right angle triangle and let's say this is theta, then essentially what I'm saying is the adjacent is root 3, hypotenuse is 2. So if you want to find sine of theta, uh, well you can find out the opposite and sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So you got hypotenuse, you already know it's 2, you just need to know what O is. So using Pythagoras' theorem you can find out this, so it's 2 squared equals 2 root 3 squared plus, I don't know, let's call it x squared, yeah? Uh, square root 3 becomes 3, this is 4, plus x squared, minus 3 on both sides, that's 1, so therefore x equals 1. Okay, it can't be negative 1 because, actually it can be negative 1, but anyways, this is 1. So that means sine of theta is equal to 1 over 2, okay? Now, you got to be careful though, because we know it's in the third quadrant, sine is clearly negative, sine is the y values, and cos is also the x value, which is also negative, that's why it's negative root 3 and 2, and now we know that since sine has to be half, then this is currently negative half, hence why the answer is A. Okay, I, I can see why it's tricky, but I did one in 2017, this is very similar, you can look at 2017, kind of get your head around it. Okay, so you get the triangle first, Find the ratio, once you've got the ratio, work out sine or cos, whether it's positive or negative in that region. That's that's pretty much what you got to do. Okay, uh, general solution, um, look, you can technically type this in your calculator, it should probably come up, but let's, let's try this. So you're trying to solve for, was it sine of 2 times x is equal to negative 1, comma, and you're trying to find x. Now if you don't give it a domain, it will give you a general solution. You give it a domain, and it will solve within that domain. So if I press enter, you see that n1? That n1 is your n. You know, see n element of z. So if I write it out, x is equal to, what is it? 4 n minus 1 times pi over 4. True, now do I see it there? I don't, so I'm gonna split up the fraction. Multiply pi, that gives you 4 n pi minus pi on 4. So I split up the fraction and the fours cancel out, so I really got n pi minus pi and four. Uh, do I see that anywhere? Yes, I do. First one. Question five is A. There we go. Where n is an element of z. So I just use my cats, yeah? Um, that's what general solution is. It's like, because they don't give you a domain, you've got infinite answers. So depending on what n is, that's a possible answer. So n could be 0. If n was 0, then one answer is negative pi and 4. If n was 1, then you have negative pi and 4 plus pi, and you know, it carries on. So you have infinite answers. But if you want to give a domain, so if you do get a question where they want a domain, I'll do the same thing, sine of 2 times x equals negative 1 x. But let's say now I want to give a domain. So how do you do it? Control equals given symbol and then you tell it from where you want so let's say it was from 0 to 2 pi so 0 is less than x is greater than or equal to 0 and it's less than 2 pi okay and you see it gives me the exact answer so if you don't give it a domain for circular functions it will give you a general solution so even if you sucked at it multiple choice questions should save you there with the cas all right, so that's question five. Let's go to question six, okay. Um, then which one of the following statements must be true? Okay, You're, in all of them, they're trying to find A. So if I were you, I'd probably just type it in my calculator. I'd just do solve B equals to, was it E? So exponential, so E to the, what was it again, three times A. Okay, and then I say solve that for A, comma A. Bam. So there we go. It's A equals to log N. LN means log base E. So log base E of B and a third. And there you go. Log E of B and a third. So it has to be E. Cas it. Okay. Trust me. Just cas it. Don't, don't worry too. You just need to notice a few things like that. It was an equation. 
you're obviously trying to find a because it's always a equals a equals a equals a equals well solve for a then okay uh, let's look at question seven uh, they all look like it's an exponential because all the solutions here are exponential uh, you've got an asymptote of negative one, so obviously it's gone down one, hence why it's an asymptote of one. So it can't be this, it can't be that, and it could be any of these three because it's minus one, minus one, minus one. Now remember, a normal exponential graph looks like this. If you put a negative next to the x, it will go like this. Okay, so it'll be y equals e to the negative x. That's what happens. But if you put y equals negative of e to the x, it's a reflection in the x-axis, so it flips over. Okay, so if you flip it over, then technically it looks like this. But neither of that, so y equals to negative e to the x, doesn't look like any of the ones I see right now. The one I want is this. Okay, so the only way to get that is if you reflect it like this. So not only do you have a negative x, and then you flip on the x-axis again. So technically you need two, two reflections. Okay, so the only one with two reflections out of the two has to be E. E is the only one where it goes down and it has two reflections. Okay, um, so seven is E. So that, that goes back to you knowing your transformations and your graphs. Uh, logarithmic graphs. So again, the better you can picture this, if you can't, type in your calculator. But for me, I'm looking at that and I know X plus one tells me left by one. So, and I know the graph of logarithmic graphs looks something like this. Okay, so clearly the domain, clearly what would the a value have to be so that I have a domain that's all the way to infinity, okay, and then a has to be negative one because it says find the maximal domain. So what's the largest domain you can have? Obviously a can only go as far as negative one. So a has to be negative one. Okay, surely a can be zero and one, but it's not the maximal domain. All right, uh, next question. <coughs> 9, your function g has the rule, okay, so you got that. If g of 2x equals to log 3 of a, then a is equal to, okay, this sounds really confusing, but let's take our time. We've got g of x, and they want g of 2x. So that just means if I sub 2x into this equation. So g of 2x will then equal to 2 log 3, of five times two x. That's essentially what it means. You're subbing two x in, okay? And they told me the answer is log three a. Okay, cool. So this is two log three of 10 x. And remember the answer that we've got right now doesn't have a number in front of log. So I'm gonna bring the two up and that now becomes log three of 10 x all squared which is the same thing as writing log three of 100 x squared. So that means A has to refer to what's inside the brackets, which is 100 x squared, it gives me D, okay? Um, yeah, so I'll pretty much just try to solve what G of two x is, and I got this, and then I rearranged it so that it looks like log three of A, and I found A because A is what's inside the brackets, okay? Uh, next one, limits, uh, like I said in previous questions, if you want to do the limits, you should simplify it first. The reason why is because if it approaches five, and let's say it is so close to five, then five minus five becomes zero, and you can't divide zero. But if you simplify it, you can see that you can sort of see what it approaches to. So I would say simplify the top, so you would get x bracket x, what's that, uh, 5 and 3, maybe negative 5 plus 3, yes that works, and you got x minus 5, limit of x approach 5, now the 5's cancel out, they divide, because it's all times by the way, so now you've got limit of x approaches 5 for x plus 3, so if it approaches 5, and this was so close to 5, and let's say it was 5, then 5 plus 3 will give you, it should approach 8. Is, is what the answer should be, so it approaches eight. Okay, next one, I'd type it in my calculator. As soon as I saw that, I'm like, no, nah, I'm not gonna do it by hand, I'm gonna type it in my calculator. So shift plus was the shortcut. It's an indefinite integral, so press delete. So there we go, so now I've got a def indefinite integral problem. I wanna do cube root of x, so control cube root of x, what's that? Minus a fraction. 
7 on x squared and plus 2 and I want to anti-diff respect to x so here we go let's see if I can find my answer there I've got what three three quarters of x to the power 4 and 3 do I see a 4 and 3 yes 4 and 3 of x to the power 4 and 3 yes no it's the other one 3 x so e is looking pretty good e is the answer there you go just use my cast okay next one <coughs> Derivative. So if for those who don't understand what this means, normally you have y equals, let's say, 4x squared plus 1x, true? And then you say dy dx. Now you see that y, you can replace this y, and it becomes d of 4x squared plus 1x dx. That's that's why this looks like that. All, all that is saying is saying, find the derivative of 4x squared plus 1x, okay? Uh, so you can do that by hand, or if, again, if you can't, your favorite fractions, shift minus is finding the derivative, so dx of 4 times x squared plus 1 over x. Very simple. Press enter, 8x minus 1 on x squared, and there you go, d. So you can see a lot of these questions I'm doing, I'm not really trying to do a lot of maths. I mean, I went through question 1 all the way to... 12 already and all I did was just type in some CAS work. It's been like probably 10-15 minutes or so. Um, but anyways, here we go. Some leftover food is wrapped and placed in a freezer. The temperature T in degrees Celsius, T minutes, so that's a key word, T minutes, after it has been placed in the freezer is given by. So this is the temperature, T is the time, and it's in minutes from 0 to 60, so it's over one hour. The rate at which, oh okay, we don't do rates anymore, but, so you can ignore this question if you don't know it, but for those who are interested, rate at which the temperature of the food is changing 20 minutes after it is placed, uh, you just wanna know the rate uh, 20 minutes after. So when T equals 20, what is the rate? Now to find rate, it's just the derivative, T, T dash of T, because derivative of this will be the temperature d temperature by d time is essentially what that is. So find the derivative and sub 20 in is what you're meant to do, is what it's saying. Okay, so t dash of t, if you just type in your calculator, um, t dash x of, I'm not gonna call it t anymore, I'm gonna go 0 0.01 times x squared, what's that, minus 1.2 times x and plus 20 and Or, yeah, I think that should be fine. And then I'll say find, so that's the derivative. I'm going to define the derivative as g of x. So highlight that, press enter, enter again. So now that's my derivative. If I type g, um, g of x, that's my derivative. And I wanted to find the derivative when x is 20. So g of 20, negative 0.8, so the answer is a. Okay, uh, that's essentially what that is. And uh, let h be this, h of x is equals that, find the maximum value of h. Um, if you remember, in the last paper, I showed a new thing I've never taught the class before, but in 2017 paper, I did show you can use a function called f max, and it'll find the maximum value for you. So instead of sketching the graph and find the maximum, you can do this. You can actually just go to uh, your catalog, and if you're not on f max, type the letter f and keep scrolling down until you get to f max. Okay, now notice here it says you need to write an expression and a variable and it'll be able to solve it for you. So if I press f max, okay, and then I type in the equation, it's x cubed minus 4x squared. So x cubed minus 4x squared plus 3x. Normally you gotta define it because it's got a domain of zero to four. Uh, I wonder if this works. Actually, I should define it first. Sorry, my bad. Define f of x equals to x cubed minus 4 times x squared. Whoops. x squared plus 3 times x. Is that right? Uh, given, so I'm going to do control given that it is between whoops, 0 to 
four. So that's my function, and then you go back to fmax, uh, catalog, fmax, type in f of x because you defined it, and the variable is x. Uh, what's going on? I pressed something. Let's do it again, x. Okay, and then it will tell you. So x equals four. So when x equals four, you get your maximum value. So, but they wanted to find the maximum value of h, so it means you have to sub four into the equation. So if I sub in f of four, it should be 12. Bam. Okay. Uh, so that was one way. Alternatively, if you didn't like that, I guess you could have sketched it. You could have, you know, add a graph and then type in f of x. Uh, that's a bit small, actually. You know what? I'm gonna do a new graph so you can see. And do graphs f of x. There you go. And you want it from zero to four. And clearly, four is a pretty high value at the moment. Uh, go to menu for zoom fit, so A, and there you go, that top value there looks like it's the highest value, um, and you can see that it's obviously at the end point of the end point domain, so when x equals 4 you can find the highest point there, okay, um, yeah, that's another way of doing it, you can sketch the graph, but the fmax helps, okay. All right, next one. The graph of the function has n stationary points. The value of n is, okay. Stationary points is when you have a maximum or minimum. Now, the best way to do it is if you saw, if you found the derivative, okay, and then remember that when the derivative equals zero, you're able to find stationary points. So if you let it equal to zero and solve for x, see how many x solutions there are, then you got your answer. So what I would do is on my CAS, I go shift minus, find the derivative of x to the power of four minus four times x cubed plus 16x times x, whoops, times x minus 16. Okay, so I find the derivative and then I say solve this equation to equal to zero, whoops, equal to zero comma x. Now, that tells me there are two x values there. So x equals negative one, x equals two. So that means that there's only two stationary points because I said, when will the derivative, so remember this is the derivative, I'm gonna draw it here. This is the derivative, dx equals zero. And I said, find x. How many x's were there? There were two x coordinates. So when x is negative one, that's one corner of a stationary point and the other one was at two. And I don't know what the y values are, yeah? but. I'm not interested in that. I'm just interested in how many stationary points there are, and clearly there's two. Okay, so going back to my questions, 15C would be the answer, and then the final question for multiple choice. Here we go. Okay, this is the one I wanted to talk about um, because you can do this in exam one as well, so it's worthwhile sort of understanding this. So hopefully you're watching this. Um, here we go. What you need to understand is, let's, I'm do, gonna do a bit of theory work here. f of x is the function, right? So let's do it hypothetically x squared. If you find the derivative, so I do f dash of x, I'm gonna call this the derivative, deriv, okay, that's moving forward, and that gives you the answer of two x, sure? Then if you're going backwards now, if you wanna go back to the original function, well, the opposite of deriving, the derivative is anti, derivative true but the antiderivative when when you do the antiderivative it will bring you back to the original function but remember there is a plus c so the only way to find the plus c is you need a coordinate because you need the y value on this side and you need an x value which is what they're doing here they're telling you when x is 1 y is 8 but you need to find the equation for the function first that's essentially what it is okay so let that mellow for a bit, think about it, because I'm gonna do it just underneath, okay? So what we have here is we've got the derivative. They tell you the derivative, so I'm just gonna draw the arrows. F dash of x is equal to one on x squared plus six, right? What I don't know is what f of x is. I just know that whatever it is, I derived it to get here, right? The only way to go back to find out what the original equation is, is if I anti-derive. But don't forget when you anti-derive, there's gonna be a plus C. Okay, so 
that's the first step. I'm going to find out what the original function is with plus C. Okay, so I'm going to go to my CAS. I'm going to anti-derive. So here we go. I'm going to go shift plus, press delete. I'm going to anti-derive 1 on, what was it again? x squared plus 6 dx. Now if I do that, that's 6x minus 1 on x. Okay, so that tells me the original function should have been 6x minus 1 on x. And don't forget there's a plus C. Okay, so this is what the original function should look like. Now, out of all my answers, there's 6x minus 1 on x, 6x minus 1 on x, 6x minus 1 on x squared. So this can't be right. Okay, wait, am I doing it right? Uh, yep, okay. And this can't be right, and uh, this can't be right. So I'm really down to either A or B. The only problem is, is it a plus 1 or is it a plus 3? I don't know which one is the correct answer. So I need to find C. Now, the only way to find C is I need to substitute when this piece of information they've given me here, when x is 1, y is 8. I need to sub that in. So this whole side is your y value, this is your x value. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do solve for 8, okay, because it was f of x, true? So 8 is your y value equals to um, 6 times x, which they said when x is 1, so sine times 1, uh, what's that? Minus 1 over x. No, x is 1. Okay. Now remember there was a plus c, so comma c. So all I did was I just said, this is my equation. I'm going to substitute x equals 1, x equals 1, and this whole thing is your y value is equal to 8. Okay, sub 1 and y is 8, find c. c equals 3, so I know the answer has to be b. Okay, this is a typical question for exam ones, usually for year 11. So worthwhile learning that. I just use my CAS to do it, but the theory is there. The derivative gets you here, anti-derived gets you the original, but don't forget there's a plus C. They have to give you a coordinate so you can find plus C. Okay, I'm going to make sure in the announcement I emphasize that you guys watch question 16. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here and then I'll do the extended response questions. Okay.